Hello and welcome to the France 24 interview. This week, our special guest is the French aerospace engineer, pilot and European Space Agency astronaut Thomas Pesquet, who's to be the first European to fly on board the new SpaceX Dragon 2, which is due to take off from Cape Canaveral in Florida in the spring of 2021. Thomas Pesquet, thank you for being with us. It's great to have you on France 24. Right, my first question is a pretty simple one. You spent six and a half months in space uh, between November 2017 and June, uh, November 2016 and June 2017. Are you excited to be going back? <laughs> yes, I'm excited. I've, I've missed the thrill of being uh, on board the International Space Station. The view is breathtaking, the, and just uh, the general atmosphere, uh, the teamwork, the camaraderie, um, and the feeling of belonging to you know same mission, having the same goal. Uh, I've been missing all this over the last few years, uh, so I couldn't be more excited uh, to go back. Now, if I'm not mistaken, the first time round you had a seven-year training program. This time round it seems to have gone a lot quicker. How come it's so much faster now? <laughs> well, hopefully because I've, I've managed to retain some information from uh, my first training flow and my first flight, but also because there's a lot of skills you have to build from scratch. I had to learn Russian, you know, starting from zero. Um, and this time around, I just have to maintain my Russian. I've obviously tried to improve as much as I can, but I don't have to start from scratch. So that's why the second time around, you can be much more efficient and things go faster. So last time around, it was called Proxima. This time around, it's called Alpha. Where did that name come from? Oh, so it comes from, uh, uh, we, we, we actually asked the people during the, the, those, those hard times that we've had in spring, everybody was at home, you know, uh, sheltering at home. And, uh, and so we, we invited suggestions from the public. Uh, we had 27,000, I think, different suggestions. And Alpha came back uh, quite a number of times. And to me, uh, first of all, it's kind of the twin sister to, to Proxima, Proxima Centauri, Alpha Centauri, that they, they both belong to the same constellation. Um, so there's a parallel to my first mission. And also it's the closest star system, system to the Earth. Um, so it's, uh, it's a metaphor of space exploration. That's where we'll go uh, to find exoplanets in, you know, I don't know, 50 or 100 years, 200 years, who knows. Um, there's that proximity is also because we're doing things in space for people on Earth. Um, so to me, it kind of ticked all the boxes to be the perfect mission name. So the countdown's got underway. What is the aim of this mission? What will you be doing when you're up in, in space? So mostly every single mission on board the ISS, it, we're doing two things. Um, one of them is really exploration. The, the ISS is a step on the path you know, to bigger goals in space. We want to go back to the moon. We want to go to Mars. But to be able to do this, we have to learn how to live and work in space, and that's what the ISS is for. Um, but at the same time, it opens the door uh, for research that cannot be performed on the ground. So at the same time, we're doing research and we're bringing the benefits of science back uh, to the Earth. So my first mission, I think there were almost 200 uh, science experiments, and I'm expecting this one is going to be pretty much the same. So anything from material science, uh, medicine, you know, cancer drug delivery, uh, physiology, and that's why it's so... That's why it's so interesting to me, because you could do things, very different things on uh, on two consecutive days. So 197 days in space last time round. How many the next time round? <laughs> I don't know exactly, because there's so many factors. Obviously, um, you know, the, the technology, the specifics of those new capsules, they're new. So uh, we still have to get the data from the first test flight. We, they still haven't landed. Um, so this this is this is going to come into play. Weather is a big factor for you know precisely det determining when we're landing. Uh, so I can't give you an exact number, but you should be in the same ballpark six ish month on board. Do you ever get scared? <laughs> yeah, we do. We do get scared all the time. Um, I I think if you don't feel apprehension for anything, then then your brain is, is dysfunctional. It's a normal self protection reaction, and courage is actually not the is not not being scared it's actually being scared but still doing what you what you want to do and i think everybody's scared when you climb on the rocket it's impressive maybe a little bit less so the second time around but the first time around i can tell you this is very scary when the rocket launches but you still have to perform you still have to focus um doing a spacewalk is the same it can be very very scary to look down and let go 
you know, of the, the ISS, you're always tethered. But so you're scared, but but you fight through it and you do your job. And to me, yeah, that's that's the that's the least you can do. I suppose there must be a sort of adrenaline boost every time. Yeah, you every, have to go out, <laughs> or you know, you're going to take off in in a spacecraft. You've been quoted as saying quite a few times that life on Earth is much more complicated than life it in is space. True. Is that correct? And why is that the case? When you look at how complicated a space rocket is, yeah. you think it was the other way around? Not really, actually, because even though it's technically, it's the most complex man-made object ever in the history. I'm convinced of this. And, it's, and, it, and, and it flies in the most hostile environment known to man. Um, but this being said, life on space station is pretty simple in, in terms of what you're trying to achieve, in terms of the goal, the only one goal that you have in terms of, you know, all the help that you're getting to achieve this goal. So, so it's really, I think, like being on a sports team and your only goal is to win the championship and all the rest is managed by other people. So to that extent, it's actually a very simple life. Uh, and when I came back to Earth, I, I realized that suddenly I had a lot of people to interact with, a lot of different expectations, um, and that's more difficult to manage to me. So that's why, in a way, being on an expedition is simple. I know you have a lot of physical training when you're on board, and also back on Earth, you're also very sporting. Uh, is that very essential to being able to do the job well? It is, it is part of the job, definitely. You don't have to be a world-class athlete. I'm really far from being one. Um, but, but you have to like sports and you have to enjoy it because you're going to have to be in good health, uh, and that includes physical fitness. Um, space environment is harsh. Uh, the absence of, of the effects of your weight, weightlessness, um, is going to take a toll on your body. You're going to lose muscle mass. You're going to lose bone mass. Uh, you're going to be deconditioned. It's the equivalent of you know aging by 10 years. Uh, they say it's reversible. I'm, I'm hoping that it is, really, because I'm going back. Um, so you have to be in the top physical shape that you can attain for yourself uh, because you're going you're gonna to lose some of your fitness during the mission. So no. it's, it's work to do. Hard work. Uh, the American space agency, NASA, says it wants to get back to the moon by uh, 2024. Mm -hmm. Why is the moon so important? Because they've already been there in 1969, and uh, we know what it's like. Why is the moon the place they want to go back to? Is it not just to stick the flag in the ground, but to actually use it as a place to go and explore further afield? Yeah, that's actually exactly that. I think, I think this time around... Um, we don't want just to win the race and stick a flag and go back. We want to stay a little bit longer. We want to use the resources. Uh, we want to make it more sustainable. We want to reuse our descent and ascent module, refuel it, um, make the fuel from whatever is available on the surface of the moon um, and have scientific objectives, not just you know political uh, objective. So that's one part. And the second part is we know Mars is much more interesting in terms of science than the moon. The moon is interesting, but Mars is the golden ticket. Uh, but we can't get to it. Right now, we're not in a position to do it technically. So we have to improve. We have to learn. And the only way we can do this uh, is by going to the moon. It's like crossing the Atlantic uh, by plane. You know that's that, you know that's what you want to do ultimately, but you're not able of, to do it until you cross you know, the channel and then you cross the Mediterranean and then your technology is ready and you can go for the big leap. But there are rumors that the landing on Mars is sort of scheduled for 2033. Do you think it's going to happen? Will it happen in our lifetime? Oh, in our lifetime. Do you think you will actually go there yourself? <laughs> you to? I don't know. It's actually crazy because when I started my career, a uh, very young astronaut, at, at uh, the youngest of the bunch on top of it uh, at ESA, somebody told me, you're already too old to go to Mars. I was shocked. I was like, wait a minute. I've, I've only just been started. Um, but that might be true. I don't know how much time it's going to take. I think we'll see it during our lifetime. I'm convinced of this. But is if, unless I'm mistaken, I think the journey to Mars will be very interesting because the, the comparison can be made be, be between what is happening on Earth with the environment, with the uh, with the air and the, the moisture around Earth and what has happened on Mars and whether that is a threat that could also affect Earth later. Absolutely. So you can see, you can really see Mars and the Earth as twin sisters uh, in terms of position uh, respective to the sun, in terms of shape, weight, etc. Not exactly, but, and they were much 
closer at some point in time in the past. We know there's been um, liquid water on the surface of Mars, and it's gone. We know Mars has lost its atmosphere. Um, so it's kind of an interesting question. Could it happen to us? And it's very much linked to what's happening nowadays. We're destroying our environment. Could we push it to the point where we make Earth uninhabitable? Um, and is it what happened on Mars? I mean, it's extremely interesting, and that's why we want to go back. Okay, one last question. You've become a hero for so many millions of people all over the world, and even here in France especially, uh, with what is being called the pesque generation of, of young people. Was that one of your aims, or is that something that's happened as a result of us seeing you in space, the images you've been posting, uh, giving the impression you're just a normal guy enjoying yourself up in space, and, and maybe giving people a vocation also for I later think, I life? I think it was not something I, I tried to achieve. It was really, one thing I wanted to do is to share the adventure, because I was, I think as a kid, I was starved of information. You know, there was, there was not so much as today. There was no social networks back in the day that we were going to the library library and reading books, you know, it seems ancient, but that's how it was. Um, so I wished there were more, there was more. And um, so I, I made kind of a promise to myself that, that I would dedicate the time and the effort and the energy to share the adventure. And then we realized that space appeals to people, that it makes them dream. Um, the exploration appeals to people. They want to, they want the adventure. Uh, so I think that's what worked really well. And also I was I think I was I was trying to tell things like they are, you know, people asking me, like you did, are you scared? I was like, yes, I am. I was. And, and I will be again the second time around. And maybe people can relate to this a little bit more than in the past. Thomas Pesquet, thanks very much indeed for coming yeah. into France 24. Yeah. And with that, we come to the end of this edition of The Interview. Thanks for watching. More news coming right up.